Right now, we are looking at the performance data from one of my websites from the last 16 months. And as you can see, I was able to get more than 160,000 clicks and the majority of this traffic was in the last six months. And this was also the time range where I started to constantly monitor the traffic. And whenever there was a page or a keyword that lost visibility in terms of less impressions and less clicks compared to the previous period, then I took this page, optimized it again, updated the article. And in most cases, this article got more impressions and also more clicks than before. And this process helped me to get from like 40 clicks or 50 clicks so everything less than one real clicks until the point where i got like more than 800 clicks or also roughly 500 clicks so definitely a better performance in average than before and it's also important to mention that i did not publish any article in the last six months so this traffic is coming only from articles that were also existing before, which also means that updating content over and over again is definitely a good approach to increase organic traffic overall. And before we'll have into the workflow itself, which is here, I would like to show you the output of this workflow. And it is an HTML file, which of course includes HTML, but also CSS and JavaScript to add styling as well as interactivity. And as you can see, we have always the meta bar, which includes the domain and also both periods. Apart from that, we have also on the left side, a sidebar, which helps us to navigate through the report because we can just click on it and then we will jump directly to the table. But we can also see that we have URLs as well as keywords and the categories declining, stable, growth and strong growth. And declining means that an article or a keyword not only lost clicks, but also impressions, which is definitely an indicator to have a look into this article and, and update it. Then we have stable. Stable does not mean that the performance is bad or good. It just means that the performance is kind of the same or that there is no big up or down trend. Then we have growth and strong growth. And this means that an article got more clicks and impressions compared to the period before. And of course, the same for keywords. We have also declining, stable, growth and strong growth. And in my opinion, the most important part is the URLs which are declining. So this is also the content where I have a look into it when I see that there's a drop, can also filter it. So the clicks change is here 624, which is roughly 57% in clicks and also 38% in impressions. So this would be definitely a page where some action is required. So sometimes it's already enough just to spin the content a little bit. So you don't have to add new stuff, but it always saves to have a look into the Google Search Console and then check which queries are exactly the reason why this page got less clicks than before. And then you start to take those queries and add them naturally to the content again. And apart from the tables itself, it's also possible to configure everything that you can see here in the footer. So the name, as well as the title, profile picture and company information. And you can also add your own logo inside of the header. All right, then let's have a look into the workflow. And as you can see, it's organized in the trigger configuration, fetching data, traffic categorization, prepare the report data, as well as saving the report, send it to a client, and then also a loop because this workflow is also able to analyze multiple domains as long as you have access to the BigQuery tables. And we will start with the trigger configuration. So it's possible to schedule it or also trigger it manually. And then the first step is to get the client's data. So here we have the Google Sheet, but it's also possible to replace it with Airtable or any other database. So for instance, here we have the domain search data UL impression, search data site impression, these both are the names of the BigQuery tables. Then the person who will receive the email, first name, last name. These two variables are used to customize the uh, email message. Then you have also the opportunity to enable or disable the report. And then you have also the opportunity to enable or disable the report. So in case you want to send a report, then you would enter here yes. And if you don't want to send a report, then you just can leave it empty. It's also possible to add someone and copy. And we have also some thresholds for the keywords as well as for the URLs based on the impressions, clicks and click through rate. I will show you in a minute what that exactly means. Then the next step is to loop over every client. So if we have a look into the Google Sheet, then we can see we have here one row for one of my websites. Then we have also the BigQuery table names and all the data which I mentioned before. But imagine if I want to create such a report, which we saw here also for another website, then I could simply copy this row, add here the domain, then of course the right table names, 
And if you want to send the repo to another client, then of course you have also to update the other variables. And once we are inside this loop, we do a quick check if there was a previous run, because this workflow is also able to check if there was already an analysis done for this website. Then it goes into this worksheet, run history, and checks the date. And then it takes this date dynamically for the next period. So that means in case you don't schedule it, then you can also run it manually and it will always analyze the data without any gaps. If there's no run before, then we will take the last 28 days, but it's also possible to configure it. So in this example, we would compare the last 28 days with the 28 days prior to that. Then the next step is to create a performance sheet because the whole data will also be saved in a Google spreadsheet, which will look like this. So as you can see, we have the sheet name performance analysis, then it takes the domain as well as the date. And here we have the exact same data. So URLs which are declining, stable, growing, strong growth, as well as for keywords. And once the sheet is created, we will execute a SQL query, which will fetch data from our BigQuery tables. And the majority of the calculation also happens here. As you can see, we have here a variable for the days since last run. So this is also one of the reasons why we are able to compare two different periods. And if we scroll a little bit down, then we can see we have also all the thresholds inside this where statement for the data type query. So this would be data which you will see in the keywords as well as for the data type URL, so for your pages. And the output of this query is an array with data like if it is a query or a URL, clicks, impressions, average position, click through rate, as well as the data for the previous period and also the calculation for the delta. So clicks change in absolute numbers as well as in percentage. And the same for the position, click through range and also the performance status. After that, we will apply a filter because we want to analyze the queries as well as the pages. And this is done by a simple filter node based on the data type. After the filtering, we will do a group by because we want to have the data categorized in declining, stable, growing and strong growth. And in the traffic categorization, it's separated, as I mentioned before, for the keywords as well as for the pages. And the logic is kind of the same. So we apply a filter based on the performance status, then we get the URLs or we get the keywords for critical issues. So pages or keywords that are declining. I also added a filter. I also added a sort node so that you can immediately see which page or keyword lost the most traffic. In this part, the data is saved into the spreadsheets that were generated in this part. And then the final step before we will merge the data for the report is to aggregate it. So that we have inside this JSON keys like URLs declining, stable, and the same also for the keywords. And now comes the part where the report is generated. So as you can see, we have here code nodes, which will generate HTML code. So if we have a look into the node generate table declining URLs, then we can see that we are creating dynamically HTML code, which will be inserted into this node. So here's an HTML template. And the logic for every node is really similar. The only thing that change is the category as well if it's for a URL or for a keyword. And we have also another code node, which is generate table data as a variable because this report also supports pagination. And the reason why it's possible to add this feature is because we are not adding the complete data into the DOM directly. Instead, we are taking the data from a variable and we only show a given amount of rows. This is important. If you have a website with a lot of traffic, then it might be possible that you have like three, 400 or even more pages. And if you want to render 10,000 or more rows, then it might be possible that the report will be laggy or the browser will crash. And with pagination, you don't have this issue. The next step is to get data for the meter bar. So this one, as well as for the footer and for the logo. And this is done by getting again data from a spreadsheet. So as you can see here, we have a spreadsheet called report with data like company name, address, website, email, and so on. And this data is used inside the workflow and will be taken to replace the placeholders. So for instance, if we have a look here, we can see that we have a note for getting the images, data for the meter bar, and as mentioned for the company information, everything will be merged. And inside this 
merge node. If we scroll down, then we can see that we have variables like the report title, file name, domain, the date range, first name, last name, and all of these variables are used either inside of the report. So as you can see here, the report title, and also in the footer, if we scroll down a little bit, the company name, address, website, email, and so on. And the other variables are used inside where we take the report, convert it to a base64 string, and then convert it to a file. And for instance, here we take the file name with the file extension HTML, but we also have to zip it because if you want to send an HTML file to a client or in general, by using Gmail, Outlook, or any other email provider, the chances are really high that this report will be seen as a security risk because it's a file which will execute JavaScript code. So if you zip it and then send it, then you won't get any issues by getting flagged or that the email will land in the spam folder. Then we have this part, which is responsible for sending the email to the client. And as you can see, I did not send an email. And the reason is because we have an if note here, which we check if. We entered here yes, and if there's no data or everything else except yes, then we don't send an email, which might be for instance useful for testing. Or if you don't want to send the report immediately and you want to check the data first. Next to the mailing functionality, we will also take the zip file, which is created in this node, and then we will save it in Google Drive. And once this is done, we will also add a row into the spreadsheet, which is called run history. And this sheet has in total four columns, domain, download link, success, and also date. And this is also the column which is used to calculate the dates which have passed from the last run. And there's also a link to download directly the report from your Google Drive. And once this process is done, then it will loop and take the next row from this spreadsheet and it will do the same analysis for the next domain. Another thing which is definitely interesting is the cost of running this workflow. And as you can see, we are using nodes like Google Sheets, BigQuery, Gmail, and so forth. And the good thing is that the Google Sheets API is free of charge, so you don't have to pay for it, but you have to pay for the queries that I executed in BigQuery. But again, the good news is that they do have a free tier. So for instance, here we can see that the first terabyte per month is free. And so far, I never had to pay anything because I'm always inside this free tier, which is definitely a great alternative to expensive SEO tools. And even if you have to pay for it, the cost is really low because if we have a look into this report, I have checked it in the background and I had to pay for 70 MB. So the whole calculation, which was done in this node was roughly 70 MB, which is not a lot if you think about it that the first terabyte is free of charge. Another thing which is important to keep in mind is that if you want to use BigQuery to analyze the data from your Google Search Console, then it's important to activate the bulk data export, which can be done inside the Google Search Console. Another great thing is that the bulk data export itself is completely free, so you don't have to pay for the export from your Google Search Console to the BigQuery tables which is also one of the reasons why I always recommend to activate the bike data export as soon as possible because you don't have to pay for it. That's it. If you have any questions, feel free to write a comment. And if you want to learn how to use the Google Search Console API or how to activate the bike data export and use the BigQuery node inside of NNN, then I will highlight now two videos and we will hear each other in the next video.